Hey everybody, my name is Mike Garrigan and welcome to my vlog. And today I'm going to talk about how I record vocals. And uh, one of the things I do a lot is record vocals for both myself as an independent uh, singer-songwriter and for other musicians and songwriters here at my studio, Two Egrets. So uh, if you're interested in learning how I record vocals, uh, you've come to the right place. Check it out. So the first thing I do is I select a space. And in my case, uh, I usually record directly in the control room here at Two Egrets. Um, the reason I like recording in here is because, as you can tell, it's very quiet. Uh, and also, it's a, it's a live space, but it doesn't have a lot of excessive reflections. And for me, that's very important. I like a vocal that sounds real, uh, but also sounds really good. And I get the best of both worlds here at Two Egrets. We have some cool diffusion back here. Um, the ceiling has some paneling on it that absorbs the sound. Uh, it just ends up sounding really cool in here. So uh, the first thing I do is select a space. The next thing I do when I track vocals is I select a microphone. And here at Two Egrets, I, I typically will use one of three kinds of microphones. The first kind is this uh, large diaphragm condenser microphone. The second is uh, a dynamic microphone. And the third, and very rare, is a, a ribbon microphone. And um, the rationale for using a condenser microphone, and I'll use this 90% of the time, is that uh, it delivers a, uh, a very crisp sound, a very commercial sound. It's very hot. It uses phantom power from the preamps. And uh, it pretty much delivers the, the modern uh, mix-ready vocal. Um, because a lot of condenser mics have a, a boost in the top end, uh, they tend to sound crisper and more lively, and that's what we desire, I think, with vocals. Uh, we want to connect with them, and they need to be ri rich and crisp. Um, I use a dynamic microphone like this SM57 or this uh, SM7B when I'm recording um, really intense vocals that are very loud, screechy, or in the in if in the event where the singer uh, has a lot of SC sounds that tend to really cut through in a negative way, uh, these these uh, dynamic microphones really do the trick. And I use this about nine percent of the time. And finally, if I'm recording a period piece, something with very uh, crooning vocals, um, you really can't beat a ribbon, but they tend to be very dark in the way that the condensers are bright. Now, when I use these. Um, dynamic microphones, an important consideration is, is the gain on them. And they tend to be a little light because uh, they don't use phantom power. And if you use phantom power on a ribbon, you'll pop, uh, pop the ribbon, and that's not good. But uh, this device, um, the Cloud Lifter, which was recommended to me, is, is very good. It's an inline uh, pre preamp that, that adds about 20, 25 decibels of gain to your. Um, low gain microphones and it makes them sound really good so uh, I, I will always line one of those in when I'm looking at these so I'll select a microphone and usually I'll go with this or the one of the two large diaphragm condensers I have. So the next step would be to just line in your vocal uh, into your preamp and then into your uh, digital workstation or, or tape or whatever you're using to record uh, your track. Um, there's, there's something I do next that I like to do is, is I, I use a channel strip, uh, this Avalon, and um, these are a little pricey, but um, I think using, in my experience, using a channel strip to go into um, the computer, it warms things up and you can, you can really get the sound closer to being mix ready with one of these than if you just line it in. And, and the tools exist now in the computer to where, yeah, you can just run those tools uh, as plugins, but um, there's something really... I don't know, kind of nice and romantic about using outboard gear. <laughs> it's kind of a lost thing. But anyway, I want to explain what, what I do with these knobs here. Um, first knob here is a, is a preamp switch, and I usually start at zero. And if the singer is, is light, I'll move, move, him, move him or her up here if, if they're kind of quiet um, uh, or too loud, rather, just move it back here. Um, I use a roll off at 80 hertz, and what that allows me to do is to cut down on what's called the proximity effect on vocals. When you use a condenser, the closer you get, you'll notice the more bassy it sounds. Um, I use the compression station here as a limiter, a very light limiter. I'll set it to 10 to 1, which is technically limiting. Fast, fast with attack and release. I'll set my threshold so that when the singer is belting, it's never getting above minus six here. 
and anything above minus six in my experience is audible and it tends to sound compressed so uh, the needle should be moving very little but in, in the really loud sections and if it gets above there it's time to start over and um, gain it down um, move over here to the EQ section uh, of this channel strip and if you notice I have the side chain mids engaged and this high cue and frequency button attenuated and the high mids all the way up and this is set to catch everything around 6k and and what this is doing here is it's serving as a de -esser. and a de -esser allows me to catch uh, sibilant sounds in a way that's very musical uh, I, I think this sounds better than using a plug-in in my experience um, and then after that I do run this sort of little analog box called the distressor and the distressor serves as kind of an analog simulator. It's set to what's called opto mode. It's simulating a photo optical uh, compressor like an LA-2A. I think that's what it's trying to be and it does a good job. And have it set up to catch uh, sibilant frequencies again and also any rumble. So, uh, and I'm also rolling off again. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm getting rid of all the really low stuff that I don't need and the harsh stuff before I get into the, um, the computer and that way I'm ready to go. Like the, I could just put that track into a mix and, 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 and be done with it. And the, the way I have the knobs set up, uh, according to the manual, I have it in opto mode here, which is you set this to 10, this to zero, and then finally my starting point is five and five for this. And if the singer is still kind of light and I'm not hitting that minus six in, in the computer where I like to be when I record, I'll, I'll start here because that's just output and then if this gets above six I'll start sort of limiting and so forth until I reach that magic minus six point. And then finally what I do is, is I um, I line into this thing called the Focusrite Scarlet and it has um, a really nice graphic user interface that lets me monitor how things are going into um, the Pro Tools session and I have it set up over here Hey, check one, two, check one, two. Yeah, and um, so anyway, I can monitor what's going into the Pro Tools um, directly. And what I, what I like to do is make sure that this number right here uh, is never getting above minus six. Because that way, I'm preventing um, any sort of peaking that can happen when I start adding um, compression and whatnot. And also, I'm really keeping the integrity of the signal intact without getting too hot. And some people... Some people say that's too low, but I disagree. Minus six works for me. I do good work, and I like what I do. So anyway, I've just tested it with a little vocal line. It's just another day in paradise. So yeah, so I got, you know, this is up to minus 6.4. That would be a good, good place for me. And um, that's where I would start, and then we would start recording the session directly into Pro Tools. Thank you so much for checking out my video on how I record vocals. Another thing you might want to invest in is one of these little popper stoppers. Anyway, that's for another session. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any uh, tips for me, things you, you do to record vocals that maybe I'm not thinking about, please leave me a comment in the comment section. But anyway, uh, thanks for checking this out. Um, see you later.